Let's talk about why Asana is the best project management tool for 2024. I have four reasons I want to go through with you and then five specific features I want to show you in the tool to help you make your decision. My name is Kelsey. I work with iDo. We are licensed resellers and consultants. So we are here to help you buy your licenses or onboard to Asana for the first time or optimize your current use. If you need help making this decision and want to speak to someone on our team about choosing Asana, feel free to book a call. The first reason is adoption. Asana is incredibly easy to adopt. While the tool is robust, it is very user friendly and it has an interface that is easy to learn. It is not an extremely complicated tool that requires months and months of training for your team to start using. Somebody could log into the platform and start using it immediately. Second, flexibility. Asana is incredibly flexible. So while it is easy to adopt, you can really make Asana work for you. There are a lot of capabilities within the tool, but as we all know, people like to work differently. And so this is something I love about Asana. I might wanna work a specific specific way in Asana and someone else might want to work a little bit differently. And Asana actually has a way to allow this. This flexible way of working makes Asana, again, as I said before, really easy to adopt. This is very different from other project management tools, which require months and months of training and don't have that same flexibility to customize it to your needs. Third, price. Asana is very competitively priced and you will find compared to other project management tools that its price is quite reasonable and understandable. It is certainly not the most expensive software out there and it can work for small teams and big teams. With the price that it has, both small teams as well as large teams can afford to use this tool. And then fourth, feature releases. Asana is putting out new feature releases every single month. This is one of my favorite things about Asana. It is not something that stays static, but you actually can have a voice in some of these feature releases. You can become an Asana ambassador and put in your vote about what you would like to see change on the platform. Asana also makes some of these releases publicly available so that you can follow along about what's upcoming for the product. Okay, so with those four things in mind, let's dive into the five particular features I want to call out for you while you're making this decision. So here we are looking at a list of projects. We have various shows that we're organizing, a Sydney show, Tokyo, New York, and London. And as you can imagine, I probably have tasks in all of those projects. So what is so amazing about Asana is that you have an area called My Tasks. This is a number one feature about Asana. This is the bread and butter. This is why people use Asana is My Tasks. It's going to take everything that's assigned to me, regardless of what project it's in, and put it in here for me automatically, like its own project. So if we take a look at these tasks in here in my My Tasks, we can see I have some tasks from that Sydney show. I have tasks from the London store opening, from the London show, from project launch requests. So you can see I have a myriad of tasks here coming from various different projects. So what this does is, first of all, it saves me so much time. I don't have to go into every single task and put a filter on what might be mine or not. I can simply just go to my tasks and this is where I'm gonna start and end my day. And as I mark things complete, that is pushing forward not only things out of my inbox, but also it's pushing that project forward. So this My Tasks is super powerful and really important when it comes to project management because I don't wanna have to be digging through long lists of projects to figure out what the priority is. I wanna know what my priorities are today. So My Tasks gives me that view of quickly knowing, well, here are the five things that are past due or here are the 10 things that I need to get done today. Whatever that might be, my My Tasks is telling me that. The second thing unique to Asana that is super powerful and important to understand is the ability to do what's called multi-homing. Multi-homing means that one task can live in multiple projects. So if we take a look here, even at our My Tasks, and I look at this projects column, I can see that a lot of these tasks themselves are within multiple projects, so they are multi-homed. So if we open up this task right here, create sales dashboard, I can see that it's within my Sydney show, so it's pertaining to the Sydney show, and it's also been added to this project called weekly team meeting. So I can create a second project where I can maybe house some important tasks that I need to review with my team. I don't wanna create a second record that I have to take notes on a second place and which one is the most updated one. I can just multi-home that task in multiple locations. Whatever I change here, 
is changed everywhere because it's the same record. So if I don't need to review necessarily every task in the Sydney show, but on a weekly basis, I have a few things that I want to make sure to cover with different colleagues. I can just multi-home those tasks. So here are the three things I wanna focus on for my Sydney show. Here are the things I need to focus on for Tokyo, whatever it might be. This, when I edit it here, it's like editing it straight in the Sydney show project. Third, I wanna talk about assignee. So as you might be seeing here, we have a column in each project called assignee, and there's only one person. So within Asana, you actually can only assign one person a task. And this is very intentionally because you don't want to create confusion about who is doing what. So Asana forces you to bring this clarity to your tasks, to your projects, so that only one person is responsible. If you think that you need to assign the task to two different people, you probably just need to create two different tasks so that there's a record for each person, they both know there's, they are responsible, and there's no question about who is doing what. Along with that, I want to also point out another feature. It's gonna be my 3B point here. Um, what's called collaborators. So maybe Michelle is the one responsible to get this work done, but other people are impacted by it or need to know what's going on. Collaborators are all about notifications about this work. So when I want to know if Michelle has gotten this done, I can add myself as a collaborator or people can be added to be a part of the conversation. So you can have comments on these tasks and whoever is a collaborator on the task is going to get those notifications about what's going on. So this delineation between one person being responsible, but being able to add people as what's called collaborators is a great way to drive clarity in your projects. Next, I wanna talk about saved views. So when I spoke earlier about the flexibility within Asana, if I wanna work one way and you might wanna work another way, we can even take this project right here. This is a long list of tasks that maybe I want to filter and sort differently. I want to filter this. I wanna see all of the tasks. I don't wanna see just the incomplete. So I'm gonna take off that filter and maybe instead of grouping it by sections, I actually wanna group it by assignee because I wanna see who is responsible for these tasks. I basically just changed the entire structure of this project, but I can save that only for me. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to save this as a new tab and I'm gonna call this Kelsey's tab. So now when I come into this project, we might be going through the team meeting and the supervisor might wanna see it this way with only the incomplete tasks and in these particular sections. But when I know it's time to focus on Larry's tasks or Marie's tasks or whatever it might be, I can go to my tab and I have this saved view. Right now, you can have up to 50 saved views on a project. And one thing I wanna clarify, when I save this tab, all the users can see this tab on the screen but it's not changing the default. So if I were to leave this project and come back to it, the default for everyone is this list view. But if somebody else wanted to see how I was sorting the project, they can see this tab, but I've built it for myself. So saved views are amazing. I use them all the time. You can see there's another saved view up here called immediate. So these are the items that need to be immediately addressed due to whatever filters we might have set here. And lastly, I wanna talk about dependencies. So you can put dependencies within Asana. So let's take a look at this store opening for Paris. I can make dependencies between these tasks. So let's look at the hiring operations staff. If we open this up, we can see that there's a dependency here. This task is blocking this other task, training team. So I can see here, if I click on that, that's actually clickable, I can see and click into that training team and see what's going on and vice versa. Now I'm in the training team, I can see that it's blocked by the hiring operations staff and I can click back into it. Not only can you mark these tasks as dependent, but you're also able to set the dependency type. So you have those four standard project management dependency types that you can toggle between if you need to get into that level of detail. You can then view these dependencies a couple of different ways. First, it's actually a column that you can toggle on for each of your projects. So if we toggle that on, we are going to see that here. So we can see it as a column. You can also see it on the timeline view. So if we zoom out here and we take a look at some of these projects and these tasks, I can see visually these dependencies. I can even adjust them from this timeline view, remove them, add them, whatever it might be. So I can see that this is a finish to start dependency because it's starting at the end date and it's blocking the start date. But you can set up these dependencies by simply hovering over these tasks. Let's zoom in here so we can see a little bit better. 
And if I needed to drag another dependency, I can drag that straight onto another task to mark that as dependent. You're also able to visualize these dependencies on the Gantt view in a similar way. So if we go to the Gantt view, we can see those same arrows and we have that same capability to drag and drop dependencies based on finish to finish or finish to start or whatever you might need. You can see it automatically selected finish to start, but I could change that to finish to finish and you'll see that that arrow is actually represented differently and we see finish to finish right here. If you do need to change the due dates on these tasks, those dates will be updated based on the dependency that you have set. There are of course a lot more features that I could go through with you that I think continue to make a great case for why Asana is the best project management tool in 2024. Of course, we're here to answer your questions. If you want to dive into anything further, book a 30 minute intro call to discuss Asana and your particular use case.